Mr Chris uh, Bryant for Labour with us this morning. Were you a friend of Friends? Did you enjoy it? It used to be a big part of Friday evenings when I was young, yes. And I used to, you know, the bit of the song at the beginning where you go, that bit, I used to love it. Yes, it was great. And, and interestingly, I mean, my nieces adored it. And much, you know, many years after watching it. And I've even been to the Friends touring exhibition thing. Of course you have. Of course you have. I didn't doubt it for a second. Um, talk good to morning, me, Kay. Please. Nice to uh, see you. Good morning, Sir Chris. It's lovely to talk to you, as always. Talk to me about what we heard from the Home Secretary um, after the uh, COBRA meeting yesterday. And she was talking about hate marches. Um, and she was talking about anti-Semitic chants on hate... Um, uh, and it, she referred to them as hate marches if there was anti-Semitic chanting. Do you think that's going too far? I think it's profoundly unhelpful. Uh, I don't think it helps the police do their job, which is a, a very difficult job at this particular time. Um, of course, at a moment like this, when you've seen horrific scenes in Dagestan where... Um, Thousands of people stormed an airport because an, uh, an airplane was landing from Tel Aviv. Uh, when you've seen um, Jewish uh, parents not sure whether they can send their kids to school in the United Kingdom for fears of, for their security. Of course, we've got to be very, very vigilant about um, the rise of anti-Semitism and, for that matter, of Islamophobia. But I just don't think that everybody involved in those uh, marches um, is... Uh, it, engaging in hate speech, and uh, I just think it was profoundly unhelpful. Look, it's really incumbent on every single politician, especially senior elected politicians in this country, to be very careful about their language. Uh, in the end, this isn't about us. This is about what's happening, the misery that's happening to people in Gaza, the misery of uh, British people and Israeli people who've been held hostage somewhere in tunnels, presumably underneath Gaza. Um, and we want to get the peace process back on track as fast as possible. Uh, we're hearing from your colleague, um, the Shadow Science Minister, Peter Kyle. He suggested that uh, members of the Shadow Cabinet uh, who break ranks by demanding a ceasefire will not be punished. Is that your understanding? Look, I, I know we've got 400,000 members in the Labour Party. Um, biggest political party, I think, in Europe. Uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of members who have uh, friends and relatives who are either stuck in Israel or worried about whether they should go and see their relatives in Israel or um, have friends who are actually being held hostage and um, they're being pulled in one direction. And then, and then we've got thousands of members who have relatives who are stuck in Gaza, not sure where they're going to sleep or how they're going to eat tonight. So, of course, people are being pull pulled in many different directions. Um, that's why I think it's really important to emphasise three things at the same time. First of all, we've got to get food, water, medicines um, and humanitarian aid into Gaza as fast as possible. That's why I think a pause is necessary immediately. Secondly, we've got to get the hostages um, back to safety as fast as is humanly possible. And thirdly, I, and this is the bit where I think Kia's leadership has been particularly important, you know, for the last 15 years, Kay, how often have we discussed Israel-Palestine on, on television programmes in the UK? Not all that often, considering how, how, how potentially dangerous the situation has been. And I think the international community has failed in letting, letting it fester for these many years. And it's time that we got the, the peace process back on, on track, which is what, I, which is what Keir Starmer is going to be saying today. To that end, would you call for a temporary ceasefire? No, I want. I, I think it's difficult to call for a ceasefire. Look, every every single one of us wants peace. We want an end to all the hostilities, of course, but we want peace with justice and peace with security and justice. Um, I want a, a viable Palestinian state. I, I I don't want to see kids, you know, three and four year olds being um, having to be reunited when their home has been bombed. And incidentally, might I just say, Kay? Um, Deborah Haynes is doing a magnificent job. Um, and for lots of us who care passionately about what's happening in the Middle East, who visited, I've been, I think, three or four times now, um, including to Gaza and to the West Bank and, and to Israel. And I've been in, in one of the kibbutz um, that, was, uh, that was raided um, uh, in the horrific attacks by Hamas the other day. Um, I just say it's really important to all of us that you do this reporting and telling us the full story that's going on.
So thank why you to you... Deborah is all I wanted to say. Yeah. Why would you not call for a temporary ceasefire, given what you said? Because I think the fastest way of getting food and, um, uh, and medicines and, and water and power and so on to the people of Gaza is through a, a pause. I, I don't know what a ceasefire would look like. I don't know what a ne negotiation would look like with Hamas when Hamas's declared aim um, is, to, is to get rid of the Israeli state and, and to kill Jews um, because of, but simply, purely and simply because they're Jews. I don't know how you can have a negotiation with people who in, engaged in, in the horrific attacks on completely innocent civilians, um, as Hamas did, you know, beheading and, and taking hundreds of people hostage. So I, I just don't know what a ceasefire would look like. I know what a pause would look like, um, it would look like humanitarian aid getting to the people who most need it and being and enabling people to, um, to uh, you know, get to safety. What would a COVID inquiry look like today, do you think? Oh, Lord. Um, I, I just know so many people who... Well, I was, I was knocking doors in Bridge End last week and a woman said to me she'd voted Conservative all her life um, she still thinks she is a conservative, but she is so angry um, because she thinks there was no plan in government and people didn't take it seriously. She used the shopping trolley analogy um, that the government was just all over the place and, um, and, and she didn't accept any of the apologies that anybody had given. So, uh, you know, in a COVID inquiry, you've got to get to the bottom of the... You've got to get to the truth and... Um, yeah, I see you're showing Boris Johnson now. I, you know what? I, I I don't want to get very partisan because I, I think the most important thing at this point is trying to get peace in, in the Middle East. But nevertheless, um, COVID and the inquiry are very important to a lot of people here in the United Kingdom. I, I, know, I know it is, Kay. Um, but look, there are... There are I, have, I have friends who are worrying about whether their parents should go to Israel. Their parents want to go to Israel because they've got friends who, uh, or relatives rather, who are being held hostage and they feel they have to be in, in Israel itself. Um, I can't imagine anything more immediate than those fears. And of course, I've got um, friends who, have, who, who, one of the, I have one friend who, whose main reason for getting involved in politics at all was because they believed in trying to get justice for the Palestinian people so that they can have a viable Palestinian state. And she's, you know, she doesn't, she worries about going on any of the marches because she's not sure, um, you know, whether there'll be vile anti-Semitic things being said, um, which she would not be party to at all. And so all she feels she can do is watch the news and at least be a witness to what's happening um, in the Middle East. But look, I, you know, um, I've said many things about the, about the way the UK dealt with COVID um, and the complete inappropriateness of the man at the top to lead the country due that, during that process. Um, I think we know that lies were told. Uh, and the most important thing is that we learn how to be a proper, competent government. One that embraces standards in public life. Um, one that um, doesn't pretend to be one thing whilst being another. Uh, one that understands what most ordinary people are going through and one that doesn't set a set of rules for everybody else and then doesn't follow them themselves. Okay. That's what I think Keir Starmer wants to offer. OK, um, so Chris, we must leave it there. I'm just looking at your bookcase behind you, one of them saying cold people. I'm hoping that wasn't a reference for me. Um, no, <laughs> no, 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 it's Tom Rob Smith. It's a great novel. But also okay. Daniel Finkelstein's book, that's great. Um, and if you've not read The Bee Sting by Paul Murray, absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Rory Stewart's book, by the way, tells, tells you not only how mad some people are in politics, but also... Can you stop well, talking? Anyway. It's almost the end of the show. You started it. <laughs> you started it. I did, I did. You make Thank a good point. Tech. It's good to see you, Sir Chris. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on the programme.